So before we get started with um, the sprint review, I want to uh, give Kalila some time to um, go over a couple changes that happened last week. Thanks, Anne Marie. Uh, hey, everybody, welcome to uh, the sprint review. Many of you guys may know or may not know, um, Kelly Drake typically led the, these uh, system uh, sprint reviews and she was the folio lead PO. Um, uh, late last week, um, Kelly, um, 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 due to, to, to personal reasons, decided to uh, leave the folio project. So, um, um, which is, is it's sad. I, 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 like probably many of you on the call uh, ha, have really enjoyed working with Kelly and thought she was doing some great things as the lead PO. Um, and um, I'm wishing nothing but the best for her and her family um, too. So um, as a, a result of that, of that um, departure, um, I am now the, the lead PO and um, and uh, I look, I mean, I, I've worked with most of you guys on the call. So, um, I mean, I'm gonna continue to do that and I'm um, definitely gonna need help <laughs> in this role. Um, and I, hopefully I can count on the folks on the call for that. One person I'm, uh, I rely, I'm relying on is Anne Marie, uh, as Anne Marie will now be the, uh, the facilitator of these uh, system uh, sprint reviews. So she'll be, running through the slides, kicking them off, uh, and, uh, slightly nudging product owners to up. Anybody else lose audio? Yeah, we lost the audio. <laughs> the, our, our slide decks. Uh, to, uh, can can we, guys, little, we lost you for about 15 seconds there. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, I don't know where you missed me. Where was I, what part was I uh, rambling through at that point? You were just talking about slide decks, so. Okay, uh, yeah, so Anne-Marie will be the person leading the system sprint reviews, slightly nudging product owners to update their slide decks and um, ensuring that uh, we, we, uh, we show all the great work that the teams are doing. And so if there are no questions and if my audio is still on, <clears throat> uh, I'll hand yes. it back to, <laughs> I'll hand it back to Amory. All right. Um, so we have um, not so much today. Um, we, in the product owner team, um, the product owner Slack channel, we were um, talking a little bit about a proposal that Owen made mm -hmm. earlier today um, about whether we should uh, maybe think about moving away from slides for accomplishments and upcoming work, um, migrating more of that onto the wiki, um, whether that might be easier to maintain than the slide decks every four weeks. So um, I'll get with Kalila after the meeting, which may wrap up early, and we'll also um, see if we should maybe discuss it with um, the rest of the POs and the scrum masters perhaps. But for now, we're still in the um, traditional classic format. Um, uh, one thing that I did do was uh, put the teams in alphabetical order because it drives me crazy not to be able to find them. And I also added a link to the team module responsibility matrix because it seems like we're always trying to remember who is working on which pieces of folio. Um, as far as the um, members of the teams, mm, I don't think we have a ton of changes. It looks like we have a new Alexander on um, Firebird. And a couple new for folks on Spitfire, another Alexander and Igor, who's been with us a long time, but moved over to Spitfire. Oops, and I missed Kristen. Oops, Kristen spelled wrong. Um, 
who's working on the EU usage reports for index data. And a couple new folks, um, two Dimitros um, for Valaris. I took out the IRIS timeline, we've got the Juniper timeline, and we have a draft of the Kiwi timeline. Um, the pointing exercise was wrapped up uh, last week, I think it was, or week before at this point. Um, and there is much, much that has been pointed high for Kiwi. Um, we think there's going to be some spillover from Juniper. And uh, in our product owner meeting tomorrow, um, Kalila is going to be uh, talking more about that so that we can try to identify that as early as possible since we have uh, not very many more development sprints left in Juniper. Um, uh, Anton or Jakob, do either of you want to talk about the pull request guidelines? or we can just skip over them, or we may not have either Anton and Jakob. All right, I'm gonna skip them. We can always come back. Um, in terms of highlights, almost everybody is deep in bug fixes and test writing and um, uh, uh, the last bits of cleanup from Iris and starting to plan for um, the Kiwi uh, work. So you'll see bug fixes on a lot of our slides. And with regards to the presentations, um, we just have a handful this week um, because everybody's been working on bug fixes and bits and pieces that are not quite ready to show yet. Um, if Anton is on, um, I don't know, Anton, if you want to talk any more about the yeah. iris yeah. bug fixes. Uh, well, just um, if you could back up a slide. Yeah. Sure. So just want to thank everybody for the hard work um, over the past um, uh, four weeks when we were testing and fixing bugs. Um, these two charts are showing pretty much identical situation at the end of, uh, on the release day. Uh, so the bottom one is uh, Honeysuckle and the top one is Iris. So we got to 96% of passing rate for manual test cases and we had more test cases Obviously, we always grow in test cases uh, with each subsequent release. So uh, thanks, thanks everyone for the hard work and we are holding the fort um, uh, at the same level so we don't, uh, don't give in uh, and uh, our passing rate is the same as before. So that's, that's a great news. Uh, you could, uh, Anne-Marie, if you could, uh, go to the next slide. Um, so that being said, um, we had a lot more bugs that we had to fix compared to Honeysuckle. Uh, so uh, our bug count, issue count went up 28%. So we had to fix uh, 314 issues total compared to 245 in uh, Honeysuckle. And uh, well, there's a, you can see the breakdown by the team. So we need to, so um, I think top four or five teams, we need to have a, a retro meetings and kind of dive into root causes of um, such a high count um, um, bugs uh, and um, figure out the measures to start, start prevent, uh, preventing them because again, it's a big stress on the team when they have to go through so many bug fixes. So, and um, uh, could you go to the next slide, please, Henry? Yeah, so this is just the um, reminder about planning activities uh, and building activities for Karate integration tests. 
as you can see for the past few builds, they were a contribution to the test. We have more tests um, uh, added. So that's a great news. And as you can see at the bottom of the graph, there are still um, test cases that are failing. So uh, if you guys can go and check uh, if this is your test cases that are failing and, uh, and fix them, but there's still about 50 uh, test cases that uh, that failing there. And uh, my last slide, uh, my last slide is just a reminder that the deadline for RTL just migration for uh, UI unit test is September 30th. So please um, uh, don't put it uh, put it off uh, for the last minute. Don't don't let it be your uh, student uh, exam syndrome. Just studying like a uh, couple hours before the exam. So spread them out and. Um, well, I'm showing the coverage page here, so I need, we need to see more modules showing the uh, showing the better coverage um, for those tests. So uh, please plan accordingly and please build those uh, build those tests. Don't leave it till the last minute. And um, well, that's all I have for for today. Thank you. So Anton on Sonar Cloud now. Um, if you have big tests, does that show at all anymore on no. Sonar Cloud? It, it's only showing the just. It's only coverage. showing RTL. Yes, Sonar Cloud uh, can be configured to show one or another. Mm -hmm. You could still see your uh, your big test coverage uh, uh, within individual builds. So if you have a build for, for example, UI users. You can go. Uh, you can go um, into Jenkins and open up Jenkins job and see coverage for big test. But Sonar Cloud aggregates uh, RTL just coverage only. Okay, good to know. And I know for Foliage we've got lots that we still need to do. We've made a dent in it, but we had a, a huge amount of big tests that we've got to convert. So right. This is, this is why I'm kind of. Uh, doing this reminder, so uh, it just doesn't become a huge problem at the end. We still have plenty of time to get it done, and if you just uh, slow and steady wins the race, right? Yes, old Russian saying. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's a Russian saying, though. No, it's Aesop. Yeah. All right, so any questions for Anton? And if not, we're going to jump into demos um, and we're going to start with uh, Spitfire. So Kalila, back to you. Thanks, Amory. Um, so uh, Dennis is going to demonstrate some of the um, uh, updates we've done with QuickMark. Uh, he's going to demo uh, the fact that now when you add a new mark field or mark tag or row, uh, it'll auto populate with a, a leading subfield. And he'll also demonstrate that um, when you're on that quick mark record, you, you can see who's the last person to update the record. So Dennis, uh, take it away. Um, yep, thank you, Lila. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, great. Um, so I'll just share my screen in a second. So you should probably see it now. Um, Okay, yeah, so uh, as Kalila said, we've been working on some improvements in um, QuickMark module. And now I'm going to show you um, the uh, subfield uh, autocomplete uh, field, or I should say auto populate maybe. Um, so if you go to um, either edit or derive a new mark record, but I'll choose edit now. Um, uh, so and we have added that if you add a new uh, field to a record, you can see that it automatically adds a dollar a um, subfield. Um, and this works for any fields except for leader 
um, 001, 005, um, 006, um, 007, 8, and uh, uh, 99 FF. So, but um, any other fields will have this uh, automatic um, um, dollar dollar eight uh, subfield present. So I'm just going to refresh the screen. So um, I only change the and only add a new field. Um, so let's do that again, and uh, let's maybe add another of thirty five fields and um, testing um, how to complete and let's add um, I don't know um, which 019 let's try that and uh, I will change this to dollar C and let's uh, check another case uh, if we maybe leave this uh, field empty let's uh, let's do 035 again. Um, so let's hit uh, save and close. Mm -hmm. And I think this should be updated already. Let's go uh, in view source. Um, yeah, so you can see that we have um, field 035 uh, with a subfield with this information. Uh, that's I added also 035 with. Um, it well, it it had uh, to populated it as dollar eight, but I changed it to dollar C, and it was saved. And the other zero thirty five that didn't have any content uh, was was not saved. It was removed before saving. Um, yeah, and uh, I think that's all regarding auto population of subfields. And. Uh, let me demonstrate maybe um, another feature is uh, um, when you edit a mark record, you will see um, a last name and first name of the person who last edited it. So if I go to another um, another record, hit edit, you can see that uh, it says source system. Um, now, if I um, make some changes, um, let me just add another field again um, and save it. That's, that's probably saved already. And go uh, edit again. You can see that a source displays uh, my name as the person who last edited it. And uh, that's uh, indeed uh, the last name and first name of uh, the user that I'm logged in as. Um, yep, yeah, and uh, I think that's uh, that's all from me. Um, yeah, thank you, everyone. That looks good, and especially the subfield A will keep us from making mistakes. I think. Um, questions on any of that? And if not, we're going to switch over to Thunderjet, Dennis, and Makita, the other Dennis. Thanks, Emery. I wanted to mention that it's not, not often that you hear the name Dennis. And every time Kalila mentions Dennis to your demo, it always gives me anxiety. <laughs> I thought I'd share that. Um, so while Makita shares his screen, uh, I'll just mention as, as Anton had kind of covered, there were a number of bug fixes and Thunderjet uh, had just over 50 bug fixes in the last couple of sprints here. And as always, they did an incredible job of parsing those, identifying solutions. And uh, some of the more complex bugs related to fiscal year rollover functionality that we finished for the Iris release, rounding errors in fund distributions when you're using, you know, cost of 99 cents, et cetera. Um, also, so I wanted to mention that we worked on, we demoed last sprint meeting the keyboard shortcut implementation, and we, we were able to implement those in the other acquisitions applications as well. We also did some work on resizable pain persistence, which was an issue in acquisitions apps. And we nearly finished printing orders and voucher records. Uh, we're going to make some updates there. So we thought we would maybe demo that the next sprint meeting. 
But with that, I'll hand things over uh, to Makita. He's going to show some of the other work that we were up to. Yeah, thank you, Dennis. And uh, uh, I'll start from um, restrictions for acquisition units uh, that we implemented uh, in previous sprints. Uh, so previously we had uh, restrictions only on backend side for edit and delete actions, and uh, now we apply them uh, on client side as well. So before the demo, uh, I prepared uh, a fiscal year uh, with two acquisition units, include and exclude. And let me show me uh, your um, these units. So uh, current user is not uh, is not assigned to any of them. Additionally. Uh, one of the unit uh, currently restricts uh, edit and both uh, restrict uh, delete. And uh, back to our finance, uh, you can see that uh, edit and delete actions are disabled because uh, both of them are restricted. And uh, in case uh, we assign uh, user to acquisition unit so yeah it's assigned uh, back to our fiscal year and uh, we can see that uh, our actions um, are active now uh, and uh, let's change a bit our units again uh, to show how it works with uh, restrictions options yeah let me uh, remove my user so uh, all actions are disabled again and uh, when i uh, remove like uncheck edit restriction for one of the unit and edit is now is not restricted uh, restricted area area and uh, we can go back to finance we can see that um, edit action is active now and uh, delete action remains disabled because uh, it's just take, uh, it's uh, restricted for both uh, acquisition units and uh, that's it with um, our changes for acquisition unit restrictions uh, additionally i'd like to mention that it works not only for fiscal where we applied it uh, for other acquisition models um, where we use uh, acquisition units like orders, organizations, um, uh, and so on. And uh, let's move to another feature, uh, actually features, and uh, they are in orders uh, model. Uh, uh, so I'll start from linked instances, uh, accordion, uh, currently, uh, like we implemented it uh, for uh, order line details and, and it shows all related instances uh, or titles uh, from inventory um, and uh, it displays uh, the same columns and the same format that is used uh, in inventory application like contributors, uh, publishers and relation. Uh, and uh, in case it's package, uh, uh, pure line uh, we show several titles and in case it's uh, just um, pure line it's only one title uh, one instance and uh, uh, the last part uh, the last feature is that uh, we implemented uh, support of custom columns uh, for orders application uh, it works both for order lines and for orders. So now we can customize how tables looks look. Uh, and I think that's it for me. Thank you. That looks really good. Good to see some new functionality. All right, so now I have managed to lose my PowerPoint. All right, next up is Firebird with Steph and Alex. Hi there. 
Uh, while Hello. Alex is sharing his screen, um, Firebird worked through a slew of bugs as well, um, but we were able to um, work in a piece of functionality for circulation log that I think folks will be excited about. Uh, do you see my screen? Do you yes. hear me? Okay. So we added pattern lockup to the filters. It's pretty straightforward. We can select the user and uh, his uh, her barcode appears here. So we can make the search. That's basically it. We can select another user. So and do a query for them. That's it. Thanks, Thank Alex. You. That's awesome and quick and to the point. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Prokopovich, Zach. Hi there. Um, I also have a couple of quick demos. Um, we did a bit of work in inventory showing the shelving order on the item record. So if we, whoop, I want an item record. Look at an item record here. You can see the shelving order, uh, which is uh, provided by the back end, is now displayed on the item record. So that piece of data is finally available. And then in requests, um, it is now possible to search for items um, by their ISBN. So we do a search here. You can see, um, you know, that's not in the barcode or anything, um, but it's going to the item record for that. You can see the. Now I got to get back to the. Um, identifiers. You can see um, there's the identifier that we just searched for. So there you go. ISBN search in requests. That's it. And so the, the ISBN search is doing the same kind of searching that the um, inventory ISBN search does, where it, it, it doesn't translate between 10s and 13s. It just does the whichever version is on the record. Is that right? I believe that's the case. Yes, um, yes, that's correct. OK. Thank you, Charlotte. And, uh, the shelving location that's that's just um surfacing it's not an editable field on the item record is that right that is correct it's just surfacing the data that's provided in the response and, and that okay. element we will be uh, able to use example in some of the screens where we have call numbers and then we want to do a, a call number sort mm -hmm. but that is remaining work yet Okay, awesome. Um, all right. Anton, do you have more that you want to talk through? No, no, I'm all set. This could be the shortest demo on record for Folio. Um, does anybody have questions or comments or follow-ups to anything that, that was presented today? I can chime in a little bit on the demo that Zach did about ISBN search and requests. It does do normalized ISBN search um, for actual ISBNs. Like if it's a valid ISBN, it will normalize that and search by that when you can put one in the search field and requests. Now that does function in snapshot currently. So it <clears throat> so it will translate between tens and thirteens, or no, no, no. Uh, but uh, but uh, um, what uh, Brooks is uh, explaining is that uh, the normalized, so you can you don't need to uh, enter. The punctuation, etc., that's supported, but um, but, gotcha. uh, but okay. doing that uh, uh, because yeah, 
uh, we are not doing uh, any uh, behind the scenes translation between uh, tens and uh, 13 digits uh, ISPNs. Elasticsearch uh, will provide this function, does provide this functionality. All right, interesting, because we, um, in acquisitions and orders, we use, we use normalized in a different way, which I think may be tricky at some point for libraries, but, um, but it's, it, it's the right decision for orders, which is a different right decision for inventory, so. Um, any other questions or comments? And let me go ahead and share my screen again quickly. Uh, da, 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 da. There's the PowerPoint. All right, so um, up and coming sprints, we have um, sprint 114 and 115. And 115 is basically the end of our development for Juniper. Then we start to get into the um, uh, various um, uh, core modules um, needing to be released and uh, back end, front end, and then the complete modules back and front end. Um, and then we get back to bug fest. It feels like it hasn't been long enough that we should be starting to think about bug fest again, but here we are. Um, there are some brief plans for coming sprints, um, kind of in keeping with uh, the tone for Juniper, a lot of it is um, still fixes and improvements. Um, and there is a, a little um, new functionality being um, released, but for the most part, it is um, some fixes. And uh, karate, another goal that I, that some teams are are working on in Juniper, and we've got a, a little reprise of the QA slides. All right, so um, unless folks have other comments, we may get out of here super early today. So it looks like we're gonna get out of here super early today. So thank you everybody. Um, I think next time we should have a bit more because people will be wrapping up um, any of the new functionality that they've built. So thanks everyone and we'll meet again soon. Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thanks all, always a pleasure. Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you everyone.